Well, good morning from Cottage Farmstead. I'm out early this morning as the sun is still just arising out there, planning on getting some flowers cut for some bouquets inside the house. Well, I really enjoyed my Black Eyed Susans this year and a lot of my bouquet arrangements, they have gone to seed on me and are going to be getting cut back very soon. Thankfully, my zinnias are just starting to take off and produce lots of beautiful blooms. So while I'm out here today harvesting flowers, I'm harvesting not only for bouquets that we're gonna enjoy inside the farmhouse, but I'm also harvesting some flowers to sell to a few people here locally. Up until a few years ago, floral arrangements seemed like this unattainable, mysterious art that I could never quite get the hang of. But that was until I discovered Florette Flowers. She has a couple different um, mini series that she puts out for free, and one of them happened to be on how to make a market style bouquet in less than a minute. And I'll link below to her mini course series as they have been super helpful as I started trying to grow a cut flower garden for myself. So the gist of her market style bouquets is to have a handful of each type of ingredient that will make a beautiful bouquet as a whole. So she divides things up into discs, which are your round flowers like zinnias, daisies, yarrow, that sort of thing. Spikes, so like celosia, snapdragons, things that are tall and thin. You want your foliage, your fillers, your greenery, which can be anything like herbs or shrubbery or other fillers that you can find in your garden. Then you also want some sort of what she calls an airy element that's kind of light looking and it gives a little bit of a different texture. And last but not least is the focal flower. You want one flower in your bouquet that's kind of like the wow factor. So whether it's a big lily or a sunflower, something that stands out amongst the rest of your bouquet. So while having just a small home cut flower garden means I won't have all of these ingredients simultaneously perfectly throughout a growing season like a professional flower grower would, but keeping these basic principles and ingredients in mind is very helpful when trying to make beautiful bouquets from what I have on hand. So professional flower growers usually have uh, an entire bucket that they devote to each type of flower. So they'll have a whole bucket of zinnias and a whole bucket of their filler, a whole bucket of their celosia. Since I'm harvesting only for our little household, I usually just use a couple mason jars and I have water in there so that the flowers stay fresh while I'm harvesting the rest of them. And when I come inside, I will divide up all the flowers into their each type, either on the dining room table or the kitchen counter, just somewhere I can spread out. So you wanna start with your focal flower, which is gonna be your centerpiece that you're building around, and then you'll wanna grab some of your filler. In my case, I don't have a whole lot of greenery left in my garden right now, so I'm using one of my spike flowers along with some of my oregano blooms. Then you'll wanna start adding your other ingredients in sets of three or five. In any sort of design or decorating work, odd numbers usually look better visually. So I'm gonna add um, three of these zinnia flowers in here and I'm just gonna put one in, twist the bouquet around, put another one in, twist the bouquet around, stick another one in. I'm not spending a whole lot of time figuring out where I wanna put it precisely. I'm just gonna trust that this formula and sticking with odd numbers of things will look pretty in the end. So after I've gone through this rhythm the first time, I'm gonna go through it again. So I'm gonna add some greenery, I'm gonna add a little bit of airy that I'm using with the Agastache there, and then another spike, and then I'm gonna add in three or five more zinnias. Um, this time I'm doing the other color of them, but it's still the same disc-shaped flower that I am sticking into the bouquet here. And then I'm gonna repeat this pattern one to two more times, depending on how big of a bouquet you're going for. Since these are gonna be fairly small, I think I did about one and a half more times going around in the pattern before I moved on to my next one. And there you have it, a very simple, easy to do bouquet that doesn't require a whole lot of fussing or design experience from just a handful of ingredients that a lot of us already grow in our gardens. And all that's left to do is to snip the bottoms. And I try to snip at a 45 degree angle as much as I can. Since I am selling these to some people locally, I am gonna rubber band mine together, but otherwise you would have just stuck it into your vase and you would be done right there.
So inevitably, I will end up with leftover bits and pieces of the various ingredients that I had when making the main bouquets that I harvested flowers for. So what I end up doing with those, rather than just tossing them on the compost pile, is I make a little miniature bouquet or a posy. And while I'm limited on the amount of ingredients I can choose from when doing this, I do try to follow the similar pattern. So I will do the spike and the greenery with a focal flower and I'll go around with some of the discs until I run out of ingredients. And these little miniature bouquets are perfect for any little bottles or jars that you may have lying around. And they look great on a bedside table or I also really enjoy putting them in our bathrooms as well to add a little punch of color in there. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning how to make your own little market style bouquets from ingredients that you have in your garden outside. Catch you next time.